10X does the same thing, but with buildings. Sweet. Oh, no, he wasn't. Oh, actually, that looks pretty good. See it, want it, 10X it. Yum. Seen blood when you brush your floss can be a sign of early gum damage. Don't forget to get 35% off your first order as a preferred customer by using discount code FOX NEWS. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public private and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. Vivo is an emerging biomedical device company focused on the licensing and commercialization of innovative medical devices for pets. And with me is CEO John Lai. John, welcome. Thank Great you. It's a real you. pleasure to be here. I Finally know. in person. We've yeah. talked on Zoom so many times. So, and you just had a major milestone uplisting Pet Vivo to the NASDAQ. Uh, you've also got a new uh, CFO NASDAQ season. Can, talk to me about all these things that Pet Vivo has been doing lately. Yeah, it's been an exciting 30, 40 days here. You know, we got gotten the uplift, uh, we got tremendous more visibility, and our website has picked up tremendously in terms of uh, viewerships. Uh, we have a very seasoned CFO, he was with a, another medical device company where it grew from uh, 10 million market cap to 1.6 billion, beat 11 straight consecutive earnings estimates mm -hmm. by Wall Street. So that's always a good sign to get somebody as seasoned as that. Yeah, for sure. And you've been working in osteoarthritis for a number of years with canine uh, do uh, horses as well. What exactly is that? Um, explain that and how's your treatment different? Sure. So osteoarthritis is the wear and away of the cartilage. It degrades over time. It doesn't get any better. And what happens is when it starts to wear away, you get bone-on-bone -bone contact. With that bone-on-bone -bone contact, you get inflammation and pain. And it's a very large problem for dogs and horses. Mm -hmm. um, our treatment is quite different in the approach. We identify that the bone-on-bone -bone contact is the major cause, so we inject our particles in, which is uh, naturally derived, and it's uh, basically collagen, elastin, heparin, building blocks, or structure of cartilage and tissue. So once it's injected into the joint, it acts and provides cushion between the, uh, between the bones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and given that the particles are wet and lubricious, it actually lubricates and keeps the joint cool at what natural cartilage would be doing. Yeah, so, so the... Uh, all the competitors are just focusing on symptoms, masking symptoms. Uh, how do I create a better NSAID? Because that's the gold standard treatment. You give a pill once or twice a day and the dog doesn't feel any pain. And I would argue it actually leads to further damaging of the cartilage because a dog, if they feel pain, they won't jump in certain situations, they'll jump right. when and they don't the bones are still rubbing together. Absolutely. Okay, so Absolutely. you're actually fixing. Now, is that the spring treatment that I see on your website? Yes. So that's it. Okay. Yes. So, and, and that's basically what makes you different than other treatments. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We call it spring with osteocushion technology. The osteocushion are the particles, and those particles have many applications okay. for both humans and animals. Now, how big of a problem is this for animals? Well, in the United States, uh, you know, the market size is uh, about 4.8 billion, actually, and growing at 7% a year. So uh, in terms of dogs, you're probably looking at 14, 15 million dogs a year that will have it. Mm -hmm. uh, for horses, it's probably close to a million horses. Mm -hmm. So the population for dogs in the United States is about 65 million. Mm -hmm. 
and horses about 7.2 million. Yeah. Well, and I feel like people are getting more animals. Yes. Adopted, especially during the pandemic, but even before that, like the pet industry was growing so much so that you would kind of grow along with that, I would think. Yeah, so, you know, the demographic drivers in the marketplace are that less and less people are getting married, mm -hmm. less and less people are having children, so their pets become their children. And it's called the humanization of the family pet. The so they, yeah, mm -hmm. so they become uh, part of the family, and people will spend whatever it takes to improve the quality of life of their pet, just like with their children. Sure. And you see that in the increase of per spending. So in 2012, when a, when a pet owner decided the dollar amount they would end treatment uh, would be about $1,700 in 2012. Today's 10,700 is the dollar threshold before they tell the vet, I don't want to provide any more treatment. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Now, um, I don't happen to have a pet. Okay. I would love one, but um, that's another story. <laughs> but um, so what if I did and it was, it was aging? Like what would be the first steps I would take with your company? Sure, um, basically the first point of diagnosis, the consumer will see the uh, mobility of the animal diminish, the dog and then they take it into the vet, and the vet generally will do a mobility test or do x-rays, and then they'll be able to identify, hey, uh, you know, the dog has osteoarthritis. The cartilage is wearing away, uh, and, you know, you would ask the vet, what are my treatment options, and they generally would say, uh, let's start an NSAID. But, you know, we're providing something probably costing about the same over an annual basis, uh, something that doesn't have the negative side effects, but it actually ends up providing uh, pretty much instantaneous mobility increase and quality of life increase for the animal. Mm -hmm. And would you ever have the opportunity to take this beyond dogs and horses? Yes, so we were initially funded by NIH and DOD. So a lot of the work was done on the human side mm -hmm. and that's how we got into the animal side is when I joined the company, I said, you know, um, we have a unique opportunity here that the FDA has declared our product as a device on the animal side so we can go right in, I mean on the human side, excuse mm -hmm. me. So we can go right into the animal side without pre-clearance oh. by the FDA. Mm -hmm. So we were able to commercially go right into the marketplace. Yeah. Just real quick, does pet insurance cover this? Yeah, um, it has been uh, because we're declared as a veterinary device. Okay. And most insurance will cover devices. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much for coming in and um, great to hear about Pet Vivo and all your success. Congratulations. Thank you, Jane. It's a real pleasure. Okay, and thank you as well. We'll be back. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ 4 medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and started under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self-adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at MyHearIQ.com. Helios DX is defining a new era of reliable laboratory testing with fast, accurate results. With a full range of services including urine toxicology, behavioral toxicology, infectious disease, allergy, and other popular test menus. Helios DX, an alternative to national diagnostic laboratories, provides value to patients and physicians through personable and reliable services. To learn more, visit heliosdx.com labs. Secure is a product from Globex Data that has a, a different way of approaching cybersecurity. And with me is the CEO, Alan Gahi, to explain Secure and Globex Data. Welcome, Alan. Great to see you again. Great to see you, Jane. Thanks for having me. And hello to our viewer out there. So let's start with the 30,000 foot view. Tell me about the company, the products, and then we'll dig a little deeper into exactly what you're trying to do. Sure. So Globex Data SA uh, is a private Swiss company started by myself. I'm the largest shareholder of that company, myself being a Swiss citizen as well. We started in 2007, 2008 and started to create a product uh, which now is essentially called Secure Suite. It's a document management tool. It has an email 
Uh, the data is all hosted in Switzerland. We use proprietary technology and we don't use any big tech platform, which is a huge thing. In 2012, we spun off a US division, Globex Data Inc. We even had Comcast as a clients who were on their first cloud platform. And in 2019, we created our Canadian division, which essentially did a, a micro cap IPO in July 2019. And um, in October 2019, we got listed on the OTCQB under ticker Swiss F, S W I S F. So this is kind of the general picture of the company. Management has a 35% ownership, which is a very large ownership for a public company. So we definitely have the interests of all shareholders at hand. Okay. And then it, we're focusing on the secure product today, the suite of products. Go into a little bit more depth about what all you offer with secure. So secure is spelled S-E-K-U-R. Is, um, is a solution that offers secure communication. Uh, we have a secure, which is an email and messenger. We have secure messenger, which is just a messaging app. And we're also launching secure voice at the end of this year, 2021, 20, and secure pro in Q1 of 22, which will be a replacement to Zoom. So what's, what's very particular about what we do is the following. First of all, we use proprietary technology is and we don't use open source coding. Uh, that is huge because most 99% of the software uses open source coding and it has now reached its, uh, its limit of advantages because hackers are getting into those right now. Uh, we also store our data only in Switzerland. So that's also nice because Switzerland has the highest data privacy laws in the world, the strictest. And we also do not host anything on big tech platform. We have our own. So we also protect our users from any kind of intrusive laws. So that's critical. So secure is only $10 a month. You get a nice email, 100 gigabyte of storage. You can also email and message non-secure user, guaranteeing you and the recipient a round trip communication in full privacy. The, the difference in what we do is that we communicate throughout our secure server environment in Switzerland, as opposed to sending information back and forth over the internet. So we don't have business email compromise. We don't have man in the middle attack and these kind of hacks that you read about every day all over. Every day. And, and that's a key thing is that you can use a secure product, but the person you're communicating with does not need to have it in order for you to communicate and for it to be secure. Correct. Absolutely. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to communicate with my stockbroker, for example, and I need them to wire money in my bank account. Typically, a person would email, even if they have the best email in their office, when the email leaves their server, it becomes unprotected. And this is how hackers can get in. They read and scan the documents, they read everything, and now they have your bank account information, and they can even go in and take money out. There's been many articles uh, published about bank accounts being emptied by hackers. Whereas with us, we use our technology called Secure Send. My broker can open it and then they can secure reply. And the whole thing happens only within our secure uh, Swiss environment. So, and they don't need to have the application at all. And we do the same with instant messaging, where uh, we basically send a message to someone via an email and then they click and they chat with us directly. It opens this closed loop pipeline. And that's the key thing is that you don't use like the biggies, like the Amazon Web Services. You touched on it a little bit, but that's really kind of your secret sauce, right? Yes, we actually have a few layers of secret sauce. So one okay. of them is the infrastructure that is massive. So we don't use uh, the big tech like Amazon Web Service, Microsoft or Google Cloud and so forth. Most companies, even the private ones, they have no choice. They go to Amazon Web Service. We also don't require you to put your phone number when you register to our service and download the app because the minute you give your phone number away in a messaging application, hackers can get into your device and they also uh, can get into all your contacts because people synchronize their contact and upload all their contacts. So we have a thing called secure numbers. Okay. Well, this is certainly an important and growing industry as we go forward with more digitization of the world. So thank you so much, Alon, for coming and explaining secure and Globex data. You're welcome. It's, it's all digital and we never data mine you. That's important to know. Thank you.
Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ 4 medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and start at under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self-adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at myhearIQ.com. is doing some interesting things with data in the blockchain. And we've had them here before, but let's get an update because I know what you're doing is important and but kind of complicated too. So uh, we've got with us here, uh, Dylan Dugney, uh, the Chief Stratosphere Officer, and also Sam Elliman, the CEO, new CEO, correct, Sam? Yeah. So great, congratulations on that. So you know, we hear a lot about finance, blockchain all the time. I mean, what is special about data and blockchain that you're working on? Yeah, so and really we believe the tip of the iceberg is the financial use case. So this sort of hard, you know, asset play, if you will, of crypto. DeFi is sort of a derivative aspect of that, uh, where you're getting these, you know, the traditional um, legacy financial instruments echoed, you know, in a decentralized way. But we believe the next evolution is going to be um, data oriented. All these different use cases above and beyond this financial use case or blockchain just powering, um, you know, a, a, a sort of limited aspect, if you will, of humanity and human society. You can make the analogy of, you know, could you make the email is a very important aspect of the Internet. Right. Um, but it certainly isn't the Internet. And some aspects of um, a blockchain, but it isn't just where blockchain stops. In fact, there's going to be an enormous evolution of blockchain-enabled applications, and that has a lot to do with you know generic data right orientation to blockchain. And that's kind of like the simple answer to it, in, in my, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And it, Sam, I know you guys are working on, on heavy development on, on a lot of programs and platforms and things like that. I mean, what are you building? How much can you tell me? Yeah, well, what, what we're trying to do really is, is, is build a distributed data warehouse. Now, coming from a traditional uh, business, really, uh, you realize how much you value your story. Every single business has, has value in its data. And for them to really understand their customers, they have to understand their data. So what we're trying to do is, instead of having all these data warehouses built in silo, uh, we're trying to make it distributed so everyone can get access to it. Uh, everyone can, uh, can t really monetize their data. Uh, you don't have to go to a specific place. You don't have to go to your Google. You don't have to go to a specific data store. You can query it from anywhere and, and you can query or ask uh, for this data wherever you are uh, and just literally monetize it. You can say, look, I have this data set. I think it's valuable to the data store. The, the essential like core aspect of this that you have to unpack is custody and custody, custody of data. And that's true also for the financial use case, right? So we, we're used to having, just to make these and DeFi and the financial aspect of blockchain, we're used to having banks having the custody of our, of our money, right? Um, and now 
we have the case held because we have our private keys and we have, it's like if you put money under your mattress, we're back to that, except in a much higher technological way um, through blockchain. Okay. Same idea um, with data. So, so the, is that while data used to, ha- while data is custodied by centralized companies and projects like, you know, Google, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, right? We're, we're seeing the start of the revolution or renaissance or movement of data being similar to the money um, being back in a P2P relationship between individuals or between projects. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just not going through this centralized filter bottleneck of, of you know, corporations or, or centralized servers. I mean, well, thank you so much, Sam and Dylan. Always interesting to hear what you guys are working. I always feel like I'm looking into the future whenever I talk to you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> the background. <You> <laughs>
and you've only been around for 90 days. Is that right? I mean, you're yeah, yeah, okay. actually just past, uh, just past a hundred days, but yeah. Okay. Now. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you've already got more than 5,000 mobile downloads, or maybe that number has gone up too. So mm-hmm. how did yep. you break through? Cause it is a very kind of crowded space right now. A lot of people getting into it. It's new technology. I mean, how did you break through and get attention with so many downloads? You know, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons that we've been successful at this point. I think one, we started just extremely community focused and people know that they understand like when you're community focused, they see what you're trying to build and they want to be a part of that. Um, also just, uh, transparency and trustworthiness. You know, I remember when we first started, we had eight people in our channel, right. And I took the time to talk to each one of them. Um, and as it grew and grew and grew, I always made myself available to answer questions, to, you know, tell someone, uh, what they, what I think about it, uh, you know, Hey, here's, here's my perspective on that. And we've tried to keep that engagement up as we've gone, but also like let the community kind of self-regulate and self-build too. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'd like to think that, you know, we have an amazing team that we, uh, you know, I have a background in consulting and tech. So, um, very agile approach to our, our software development and, and just, uh, you know, uh, thankfully been hitting on all, all the right cylinders. Okay. We mentioned your team. So tell me about who all makes up pink Panda. Well, we've got a pretty diverse group of uh, uh, developers and marketers, and it's also formed of the community. Um, I'll call out a couple uh, key people that, that really have uh, helped support us. So I've got two key advisors that I want to mention. One is uh, Gene Toronto, and he's actually uh, been with us very near the start. Uh, a friend of a friend, a network reference who uh, really loves their, our uh, social impact commitment and, and you know, uh, for decentralized finance, for the unbanked, the, uh, you know, loves that aspect of us. His background is is he's been in regulatory and compliance for over 30 years. He was the former chief compliance officer at PayPal, um, you know, and just like brings a wealth of experience. He was in dealing with Bitcoin and PayPal in 2012. So just, I mean, an incredible support. Um, And then we also have Keith Luce on our team on the tech side, and he's helping design out the technology side. Uh, He's got a background. He's at Block.One as an architect. He's been at um, HSBC, um, been coding since he was nine years old, right? So we've got some real strong um, people uh, more on the public side. And then the back side, we just have a real good group of developers and community as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Adam, for joining us and telling us about Pink Panda. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Luxury has a new address. This is such a cool space. And Casey McDonald holds the key. Take that in, baby. Step inside and experience the lifestyle. This is your backdrop for everything. Indoor, outdoor entertaining. Like that. Mansion Global, Tuesday on FBN Prime. Selling a home is expensive and stressful. So we set out to create a better home selling experience. Focusing on the basics and using strong fundamental analysis and extensive company research is why we believe we are San Diego's choice to grow your investments. We don't use commission type products at Wilsey Asset Management. We are a fiduciary based investment firm. Register today and get free access to our monthly workshops to learn the secrets of our long-term success. See our investment strategy firsthand. We manage our personal portfolios as we invest yours. Don't miss a boat on investing with fundamentals. Buying a home can be really complicated and expensive with closing costs alone costing thousands of dollars. With SDCCU Zero Closing Costs Mortgages, it doesn't have to be. Closing costs include things like title services, appraisal, and more. On an average priced Southern California home, you could save almost $5,000. With all that money you save, you can decorate your home, work on some DIYs, or take up a new hobby. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? 
there's more to the ultimate driving machine than you might think. Multiple forces converging to create something uncontainable. Introducing the ultimate first of its kind machine. The ultimate. Students have been injured. Um, Haitian migrants have overtaken buses and tried to escape. There's been reports that agents have been bitten by migrants. And so, in fact, these uh, many of these migrants had already been resettled in Chile and, and other South American countries. Uh, but they saw that the U.S. border was open. They sought to take advantage of it. They ditched their documents from Chile and elsewhere. And they plan on applying for asylum, claiming that they just came from Haiti. Um, and they are not eligible because they were already resettled. And we have to guard against asylum fraud. You know, Laura, you and I have been talking about this for years. We've been covering this story since 2016. So as we see it evolve, you see the media not reporting on it for a very long time, for years. Uh, you see the White House and the press secretary downplaying the crisis at the border as a challenge. You hear that from the Homeland Security Secretary. Then you have Rodney, Rodney Scott. He's a 29-year veteran of, you know, border authority and national security. He's been in that, you know, network for some time. He was Biden's former top border chief. He's warning that transnational criminal cartels are purposely blowing out the size of the migrant camp under the Del Rio Bridge. Why? To distract Border Patrol away so they could do human smuggling, drug trafficking, and potentially cross terrorists in, across into the U.S. border. Your reaction to that? Yeah, it, it is. It's terrible. So the Border Patrol has had to shift resources to address what's going on in, in Del Rio. There is over 220 miles of the border that are unmanned because of it. Uh, that border is wide open thanks to the policies of the, the Biden administration and now traffickers taking advantage of it. And we have to remember with the fall of Afghanistan, uh, Al Qaeda, ISIS, the Taliban are revitalized. They have to have the eye, their eye on that open border uh, to exploit it and send their fighters into the U.S. Lori, so we instead of reporting on this, we see the media focusing full on about the, you know, the border official on horseback right, with the split reins, that story, when that is a common practice to both protect the individual in front of the horse, to stay away from the horse. We see it here in New York City with police officers on horseback. He did not try to whip that man. You see the focus on that instead of stories that we just reported about transnational criminal gangs blowing out the size of the migrant camp under the Del Rio Bridge. We've got to say Del Rio is a town of about 35,000. If you're talking of tens of thousands more, the, this is border towns getting swamped. Then you have a Buffalo ICE official, former ICE official, saying there, there is pressure to ship uh, illegal aliens into the interior of the country from headquarters in Washington to do catch and release, sending illegal aliens to Chicago, Denver, uh, New York City, Washington uh, State, and Pennsylvania. Your word on that. So the issue regarding the agents on horseback is appalling, and the Biden administration and other members of Congress are continuing to run with it. Jen Psaki repeated those claims today in her press uh, briefing. And reportedly, Al Sharpton is going down to the border tomorrow and demanding that Haitians be uh, given asylum. Uh, for the first time in months, the Vice President Harris, who's the border czar and supposed to is responsible for this, um, stuck her head up and is uh, bad mouthing her very own agents and seeking an investigation. Jen Psaki reported today that those agents on horseback have been put on administrative leave. Uh, these agents have been through so much. They are trying to do their job dutifully, but they did not sign up for this. 
And it is wrong to blame the agents when it is the Biden administration's policies that have created this crisis. Laura Reese, it's great to have you on. Come back soon. We appreciate your insights there. I'm Elizabeth McDonald. You've been watching the evening edit on Fox Business. That does it for us. We so appreciate you watching. We hope you have a good evening and join us again tomorrow night. Hump night. Welcome to it. The president said he's, quote, getting it under control. But how can he possibly understand the border situation if he's never even been there? Neither is his vice president. Isn't that weird? By now, we've all seen the shocking images of thousands of Haitians jammed under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas. They've built a tent village and hundreds more reportedly cross into the U.S. every single day. Democrats have begun to turn on the administration as the humanitarian crisis continues to worsen. But today at the White House, our own Peter Ducey pepper Jen Psaki with questions about the president's knowledge of the situation. Watch. Has President Biden ever been to the southern border? In his life? Yes. I will have to get look back in my history books and check the we, times he's been to the southern we, border. I can check and see when the last time or when he may this, have been. This, but, this, but tell me more about why you're asking. Because this is a president who makes a point when there are disasters in this country, like a wildfire or a hurricane, to go and see for himself firsthand what the needs are of the local community so that he can have an informed POV to make policy. Why doesn't he do that? Uh, why doesn't he go down to Del Rio, Texas and see what's going on? Oh, snap, girl. You got no answer. Problem is, the president isn't the only one who seems to be clueless about what's going on. His borders are. Vice President Kamala Harris has been characteristically MIA. Where's Kamala? And Homeland Security Chief Alejandro Mayorkas lost in space. Get a load of this. How many people have been returned? How many people are being detained? How many people have been dispersed to all points around America? Uh, Senator, I would be pleased to provide you with that data. I want them now. Uh, Why don't you have that information now? Uh, Senator, I do not have that data. Why not? Army. Why don't you have that basic information? I worked 18 hours. Oh, well, if that's not embarrassing, I don't know what is. Come on, man. You're at a Senate hearing. Have the numbers. Mayorkas also had the nerve to whine about working 18 hours on the border situation. 20 more minutes and you'd have solved the problem. Making matters even worse, the Associated Press reporting the Biden administration is letting those migrants free to spread out in the United States. Who wouldn't want to be here? Naturally, the White House, they're denying that. But if it's true, have they all been tested for COVID? I think we all want to know the answer to that. And if the Biden administration has no idea what's going on along our border, how can we expect them to fix it? Joining me now, Federalist co-founder and Fox News contributor, Ben Dominich. So, Ben, the president says he's got the whole thing under control. But as, as you watch this and you watch various crises just on the southern border, never mind the economy, COVID or Afghanistan, do they have a plan here? Well, uh, Kennedy, I think that one of the things that's going to be amazing, because this is now bound to happen, is that we're going to have one of those Joe Biden reminiscing moments where he remembers all the times that he's been to the border uh -huh. and all of the stories and experiences that he's had there. Probably going to happen in public at some point before they, you know, cut that mic. Um, it, it really is amazing to me how much this administration is willing to pretend like everything's okay in every respect. But nowhere is that more true than it comes to this, than when it comes to this rolling border crisis. And it is a crisis that has been unceasing this entire year. And look at the situation that you have right now. Yes, there's this shiny object of, oh, we're going to you know, take some of these Haitian migrants and we're going to figure out a way to deport them on planes and, and that type of thing. That's not the majority of what's going on. Instead, they are being released uh, on their own recognizance. Uh, they are being released in ways that almost, you know, certainly do not end up with them showing up at an office within the next 60 days. Uh, and I think that what you saw happen over this past week, you have to keep in mind, this is something that is intentional. You do not have over 10,000 people show up from a certain part of Mexico without something being planned and being permitted. Mexico is on the cusp of being a failed
so-called narco state. The cartels essentially decide what happens on the border. Someone flipped a switch and gave permission for them to come. And the real thing that I think we should be asking is, what were they doing on all the other parts of the border that Border Patrol wasn't able to pay attention to because they had to deal with this crisis? Yeah. What were they getting across? Uh, and, you know, and how much uh, are we going to see that have an impact in terms of fentanyl deaths and other potential uh, outcomes uh, in that nature? We have to understand the cartels run the border. We don't. The cartels run the border because drugs are illegal, yet still great demand for them in this country. You've got 30,000 Haitians in Colombia. They are eager to make their way here uh, through Central America into Mexico and finally into the United States. As you pointed out, Del Rio has become the magnet. But, you know, again, there is not a system in place to process people. And, you know, I, I don't disagree sending them back to Haiti is cruel. You know, if, if you're dealing with an assassinated president and earthquakes and all sorts of other natural and man-made crises, sending them back there is really the worst case scenario. So don't we have to prioritize asylees and refugees in this country? Well, of course we should, but I, I also think that one of the things that we saw coming down the, the pike as soon as Joe Biden uh, got elected was that they were going to roll back everything that President Trump did, regardless of whether it was a smart move or not, simply because the left has adopted this attitude that if, if it's associated with Trump, it's bad, it's stupid, it's wrong, think, etc. And in fact, what we've seen is that a number of those policies actually did lead to a situation that was sustainable on the border uh, and that was uh, leading to people not having that magnet effect uh, that comes when you have these types of permissive policies. Look, we, we have a situation there that has to be brought under control. It has to be brought under control before we can have any conversations about a, a bureaucratic system, a government-run system that is absolutely broken when it comes to our immigration problems. But that's always been the case. It's why you needed to have that binary of a secure border before you can have any conversation uh, about what's going to happen and, and how we should allow people to come here. Yes, because this is not how you allow people to come here. This is not the situation that you create. And as you pointed out, this administration is just trying to get them out of there as quickly as possible because this is such bad optics for them. And, you know, it just mires them in this immigration debate that really no side wants right now. But this is something that is truly splitting the Democrat Party. Uh, ben Dominich, thank you so much. Great to be with you, Kennedy, as always. Always good to talk to you. Thank you, dear. Democrats are throwing a hissy fit over images of border agents rounding up illegal migrants on horseback. Uh, some are still insisting that whips were involved. Here's Mad Maxine Waters today. What the hell are we doing here? What we witness takes us back hundreds of years. What we witnessed was worse than what we witnessed in slavery. Cowboys with their reins again whipping black people. All right, so if they're mad now, wait till they hear about President Biden's newest plan. He reportedly wants to build a facility to house the migrant Haitians at, wait for it, Guantanamo Bay. Gitmo, problem solved. Well, let's talk about that with tonight's man panel. We've got Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor Charlie Hurt is here. We've got the aggressive progressive podcast host. He's a former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer. Christopher Hahn is back. And Foundation for Economic Education Policy correspondent Brad Palumbo. Welcome, gents. Charlie, I will start. Hey, Kennedy. With, hi, how are you? Uh, so Gitmo's going to be a, a wonderful. Thank you. Gitmo's going to be super fun because you know the administration's going to say you guys don't have to worry about a thing. Three hots in a cot. You'll have all the water boarding you could ever want. What could go wrong in Gitmo? Yeah, no, this is uh, this is definitely not where the the, uh, the Biden administration wants to go, I don't think, with this, because this is not going to solve any problem. This is only going to create lots and lots of uh, more problems. And, and that's why they really do, don't have a whole lot of great options right now, because they have because Joe Biden single handedly created this entire crisis out of nothing. <laughs> um, and, you know, the problem when people try to uh, come to, you know, when, when they seek as, uh, asylum, when they uh, the problem 
problem with that is you're supposed to go to the nearest safe country. And all of these Haitians, these 10,000 Haitians that are gathering in Del Rio, they were in a safe third country before they arrived here. So the idea that they're coming here and they want, uh, you know, they, they want political asylum doesn't cut it because they had already achieved what the definition of political asylum was in Brazil or wherever they were before they came here. Yeah, Colombia, Panama is expecting 80,000 Haitian migrants. Chris, so the administration is where they don't want to be. No administration wants to be here, as Politico pointed out today. They are mired knee deep in immigration politics, and this situation uh, isn't going to solve itself anytime soon, and it's not going away anytime soon. So, what should the administration do about it? Well, first of all, this is the result of decades of a broken immigration system. We have people here who are leaving Brazil because they left Haiti after earthquakes, went to Brazil to work for the Olympics, building those facilities, building the World Cup facilities, and now they are coming here. We have a lot of jobs open in this country. I bet you a lot of those immigrants would do well to serve those jobs, and we should have a process to match them with those jobs and bring them into this That's country. That's great. So the it, 2013 so it really is modern bipartisan awesome. immigration reform bill that passed the Senate and was not brought up in the House would have put together a process that would have done that and would have also given extra money to secure the southern border. So I would God, like to if, see if only Democrats like Graham, had, who supported had the, that bill in the presidency, the it House, again. and the Senate, they could actually pass some immigration legislation. Oh, wait, they do, yet their immigration oh, you legislation mean 60 is, is the DOA. Or, uh, look, I'm all for getting rid of the filibuster. We should just do that right now. And no, you're pass not, that because bill. when Republicans gain Senate control of the Senate again, you're going to be the first person on here whining <laughs> and crying every day because Republicans undid Joe Biden's legacy with 51 votes. Uh, Brad, you can go ahead and make nah, heads or tails of any of this you like. Yes, you will. <laughs> You're going to be a big deal. Yeah, guy. look, I can just say that Republicans Elections and have Democrats have both back to back they do. failed on that, the Hold board. on one second. Elections do have consequences, Chris. That's the point. So the next election cycle, yeah. when your party is not in power and the filibuster's gone, you are going to be a big baby about it. We Sorry. should get rid of the filibuster right now yes, and pass because what your we need to pass is and let it work itself and out. Even and then, if the Republicans, if the Republicans and Joe Manchin aren't going to play we ball do, so on everything it. because you know what they're in uh, red right. or purple states. Brad Palumbo, go ahead, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Look, without dragging into the filibuster, unless unless you want to start having policy swing back and forth every election uh, on immigration, though, Republicans and Democrats have both failed. That is the message from our southern border. Yes, it is a crisis. It is a humanitarian Great. crisis. Is it is it is a security crisis. But in the US right now, it is unfortunately all but impossible to navigate the labyrinth that is our immigration system and Amen. come here legally. And as long as that is the case, we will keep having crises at the border under President Trump, under President Biden, and under whoever comes next. President DeSantis. Uh, you're absolutely right. And unless President Kamala. <laughs> unless, but yeah, right. Uh, she, what, what has she done? What has she done to make the situation any better? Has she talked to anyone in the Our Senate? Has she crafted true, any Kennedy. legislation? Has she come up with a system <laughs> or a plan? No. She's MIA. She's nowhere to be found. Oh, wait, she's in El Paso. All right, the man panel returns a little bit later, but coming up, it's been eight days and still no sign of Brian Laundrie. So where is Gabby Petito's former fiancé? And what is the FBI doing to find him? My memo and the one and only Shannon Bream. Woo! Both next. Incomparable design makes it beautiful. State-of-the-art technology makes it brilliant. The Lexus NX. Experience the crossover in its most visionary form. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Okay, let's talk about those changes to your financial plan. Bill? Mary? Hey, it's our former broker, Carl. Carl, say hi to Nina, our Schwab financial consultant. Mm, I know how difficult these calls can be. Not with Schwab. Nina made it easier to set up our financial plan. Mm. We can check in on it anytime. It changes when our goals change. Planning can't be that easy. Actually, it can be, Carl. Look forward to planning with Schwab. It's another day, and anything could happen. It could be the day you welcome 1,200 guests and all their devices. Or it could be the day there's a cyber threat. Get ready for it all with an advanced network and managed services from Comcast Business. And get cybersecurity solutions that let you see everything on your network. Plus an expert team looking ahead 24-7 to help prevent threats. 
Every day in business is a big day. We'll keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. I know the best coffee spot in town. I can make a rustic cabin feel modern. I am a guidebook for guests. I can make an indoorsy person outdoorsy. I give families a home, not just a place to stay. I am a Verbo host. Discomfort back there. Instead of using aloe or baby wipes or powders, try the cooling, soothing relief of Preparation H because your derriere deserves expert care. Preparation H, get comfortable with it. In 2016, I was working at the Amazon warehouse when my brother passed away and a couple of years later, my mother passed away. After taking care of them, I knew that I really wanted to become a nurse. Amazon helped me with training and tuition. Today, I'm a medical assistant and I'm studying to become a registered nurse. Hindi ko kayo makakalimutan. He knows what's fact and what's fiction, from big government to cancel culture. The message is clear. Get back in line or get out. Get your weekly reality check. WSJ at Large with Jerry Baker. At Spectrum Business, we're so sure we offer the best value for business. We called our competitors to see if they could beat our 200 megabit internet and phone with no added phone taxes, no fees, and no contracts. Thanks for calling. These are their actual responses. It's going to be a lot slower in comparison to Spectrum. I would 100% go with Spectrum. Hear that? Spectrum business is hard to beat. With 200 megabit internet and advanced phone for $69.98 per month, all with no added phone taxes and fees. How are they pulling a no fees and taxes? That's madness. Our tax may be a little bit high. I'm going to be very honest with you. You're probably going to need to go with them. Honestly, we couldn't say it better. Get 200 megabit internet and advanced phone for $69.98 per month with over 99.9% .9 network reliability. Call 833-919-2113. That's 833-919-2113. The tragic death of Gabby Petito is littered with law enforcement failures, and the FBI has been a disgrace in terms of efficiency and urgency. If it weren't for vigilant amateur sleuths combing social media and their own GoPro footage, investigators would have never really cracked this case. It's not just the butt men from Quantico who deserve blame, but also the bumbling Northport, Florida Police Department who, if they had their way, would still be chomping on pork cracklings, chirping about a missing persons case. It should come as no surprise that Northport lost balding sociopath Ryan Laundry to an undulating gator pit. But now the FBI is asking true crime aficionados to help piece together details. That's real. Where was local and federal law enforcement when Gabby's mom was making a tearful plea to anyone who would listen to find and return her daughter? Oh, that's right. The FBI was busy shielding child molester Larry Nassar so he could victimize more gymnasts. Or they were entrapping Michigan militiamen, goading them into kidnapping the, govern the governor there. Or they were ignoring leads about soon-to-be terrorists solidly on their radar before they committed mass murder. They can't be bothered to arrest Antifa slugs who terrorize once great cities. They'd rather gin up FISA warrants and leave out critical information that would keep the agency from violating innocent American civil liberties. Gabby Petito was killed in a national park, so her killer will be investigated and charged by the feds if they're not too busy delegating evidence collection to fans of the jinx. Gabby deserves better than all of this, and so do the thousands of missing women whose cases grow cold and ignored. Maybe the FBI can make better use of their time and turn a series of serial failures into some action and urgency for these lesser known victims who don't take up time on cable news broadcasts. And that's the memo. With law enforcement dropping the ball left and right, who deserves the blame and will the Petito family finally see justice? Here with me tonight to discuss, it's Fox News at Night anchor, the one and only Shannon Bream. Shannon, I know you have been covering this. So um, obviously her death, her homicide is incredibly tragic, but what else strikes you that has gone wrong in this case? 
Well, you know, it's difficult. My dad was a law enforcement officer when I was young, and he talked about how the domestic stuff, when you would show up with these fights between couples, were the very worst situations. You didn't know how bad it was going to be. Sometimes it was hard to tell who the aggressor was, and you had to make a judgment call about whether these two should be separated, what should happen, and every state has different laws about that. But everybody is now going back and looking at the body cam of this tearful girl, knowing what's happened, your heart just breaks for her. Um, one of the park rangers who talked to her um, it, it said, Listen, I got probably more personal with her than I should. I pulled her aside. I said, listen, do you know what you're doing? This is something you can walk away from. Is this the best plan for your life? Um, she's got to now be asking questions about, could I have done more? But this guy being a jerk, being uh, somebody who looked like not a great boyfriend, doesn't rise to the level of a crime. So we're asking a lot for law enforcement to get it together here. Now, interestingly, as you point out, the FBI is under a lot of heat for many things, all those different cases that you mentioned. And last week, we saw bipartisan support. This wasn't a political issue when they went after FBI Director Christopher Wray on the Nasser cases. And he said, I really have no explanation. I just have to say I'm profoundly and deeply sorry for what happened. These young women saying, listen, if you had stopped him when I reported him, these other girls wouldn't be standing here. These other women wouldn't be standing here having been victimized by him. So uh, clearly Democrats and Republicans alike think that FBI has a lot to clean up and a lot to explain. And Ray is promising they're working on it. Then why don't they work on some of those other cases of, you know, the 700 women in Wisconsin mm -hmm. who've gone missing from reservations? You know, uh, this, right. It's, it's such a tragedy in this country. And, you know, I'm glad people are talking about it. I'm glad people are paying attention uh, because there are women like this who unfortunately are in abusive relationships and for a, a very small fraction of them, it, it ends incredibly tragically like it did for Gabby mm -hmm. Petito. What, what really upset me is if you go back and read that uh, Moab police report, uh, the 911 caller mm -hmm. was very clear. I, I've seen a man right. slapping a woman, and that's why, you know, and, and was, was very specific mm -hmm. about who was the aggressor and who was assaulting who. And the way that police report's written, it's, it's written, it looks like it's written by a domestic abuser. It, it was basically, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. the, the subtext is she was asking for it. You know, she was the aggressor. He was trying to protect himself. He was trying to get away from her. And it's like, uh, no, I think the 911 call actually told contradicts that so you know that in and of itself the fact that they didn't take him into custody then and there is uh, shocking yeah it, yeah and there were multiple agencies that had some kind of interaction with these two so there was clearly a pattern of trouble that was going on I'd be his parents think because obviously they've gone cold they're not talking they're not helping I would like to know a lot more if this couple was living in their home I gotta yeah. think they had a better understanding of this relationship and what he may or may not have been capable of but I'm so glad that you mentioned these cases of these missing women from indigenous places Native American places and reservations I've had an insider come to me before to say there are horrific open cases that we are not even investigating it's almost like these people are not human they're not a priority and certainly every one of us who cares about human dignity is got to care about that. Yeah, and you know what? It should absolutely start with the FBI. Uh, Shannon Breen, thanks so much. We will be watching you tonight on the Fox News Channel. See them. Love it. Coming up, the press now furious as President Biden continues to dodge their questions. Could he potentially lose one of his last remaining allies? Plus, New York Magazine, get this, claiming $3.5 trillion, not a lot of money for a spending bill. Are they adding up all the other cash the president has spent?